So we're going to talk about the accusative case today. And the accusative case allows us to make sentences that are much more interesting than just having a subject noun, a pronoun, and a verb. So if you know any English grammar, this is going to be easier for you because what we call the accusative case in Latin is called the direct object in English. They're exactly the same thing. Uh, the accusative receives the action of the verb. So if I say the girls buy the apples, the verb is buy, what do they buy? What is being bought? We call that the victim of the verb. What is being verbed? The apples are being bought. So the apples are the accusative. Now the accusative answers the question who or what after the verb. So the easiest way to find the accusative is to ask who or what is being verbed. So who or what is being bought? The apples are being bought. The girls are not being bought. The apples are. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So if I said the hungry lion chased the teenager, we identify the verb which is chased. Then we ask the question who or what is being chased? The teenager is being chased, not the, hung not the hungry lion. And so the teenager is the accusative and here it's accusative singular. Next one is the referee flipped a coin. Flipped is the verb. Who or what is being flipped? What is the victim of being flipped? The coin. The coin gets the action. So it is the accusative. The coin gets flipped is singular. So pretty simple as far as that goes. Let's talk about word order next because word order is really important. So the typical word order in an English sentence is a uh, subject or the nominative in Latin, verb and direct object. That's English, right? That's English. And remember subject is called nominative in Latin just to get you familiar with the terms and the uh, accusative is the direct object in English. So word order, it's not always, but it's most of the time that's the word order. Word order is pretty important. But in Latin, our word order is usually the nominative and then the accusative or the direct object next and the verb last. It's not always necessary, but that's what you most frequently see. If you're familiar with Star Wars, Yoda very frequently talks in uh, Latin word order. Remember, he'll say, tired I am, right? So the I am, the verb goes at the end. Now in English, we depend on word order to convey meaning. So I could say grandma eats a banana and I know exactly what you're talking about. I can take those same words and put them in a different word order and this word order conveys an entirely different meaning. So if I said a banana eats grandma, this would be the direct object or the accusative because it's the victim of being eaten. So Word order, as you can clearly see, is very important in English. It's not as important in Latin because we depend on the cases, remember, the different cases, the different noun jobs, the endings of the cases to carry the meeting. So word order doesn't matter as much. I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So that will help you very much, okay? So we can't, we didn't change any words in here. So the endings don't matter in English. Still stays banana eats grandma does matter in, in Latin. And the accusative also helps the sentence have a complete thought. So to have a complete sentence, you have to have a capital and an end mark and a subject and a verb, but it also has to make complete sense. So if I said the sheriff of Nottingham arrested, well, who? Who did he arrest, right? It, it's not a complete thought. We have to have an accusative or an, as in English, the direct object to know who he arrested. Not every sentence needs an accusative, but some sentences do in order to be a complete sentence. And here we're, we're missing who he's arresting. All right, so let's work through some sentences, but I'm going to give you some rules. And these are rules you actually need to memorize because they will make a big difference in your Latin life and prevent you from making a lot of mistakes. The first one says, in a sentence, you can only have a separate nominative if the verb is in third person. That's actually an English rule as well as a Latin rule. You would never say, uh, you the girl eats apples because that would not make any sense. We could either say you eat apples or you could say the girl eats apples, but you couldn't say you the girl eats apples. So you can only have a separate nominative if the verb is in third person. So that'll be one thing to check when we start doing this sentence. When you have a separate nominative, you don't use the pronoun within the verb. Remember how it's I, we, you, y'all, he, she, it, and they. The nominative replaces the pronoun. We wouldn't say 
she the girl eats the apple or it the dragon flies over the castle we would replace that it and that she with the person uh, the actual name of the subject noun. the third thing you need to remember is the nominative and the verb must match in number that's also an English rule we wouldn't say the dragon fly over the castle you would that sounds funny to you and the reason it sounds funny is because fly is plural actually even though it doesn't have an s so we you would say the dragon flies over the castle or the dragons fly over the castle so in each case you're matching the number of the verb to the number of the subject pronoun okay those are really three really important rules you need to write them down somewhere you need to memorize them because they will save you a lot of trouble when you're translating all right so let's do this first one here I'll walk you through four sentences so you can kind of get the idea of how to do this so always identify the verb first so first you find the verb so first verb okay find the verb the verb is amat we see from the ending that it is third person singular and it's present tense so now because this is singular we have to look and see if there's a nominative in singular well here you go you have the two options Julia and Markum Julia is the only one that has a nominative singular ending so there we go they both match they're both singular now we have one more word to worry about and that's markum so uh, you don't know this yet because you haven't learned second declension I know this this happens to be an accusative ending so the second thing you find is the nominative see if there is one or there can be and the third thing you look for is you look for the accusative or any other words okay all right so markum I know that that happens to be accusative singular you'll learn that soon enough now I will tell you the accusative does not need to match the verb or the nominative in number doesn't matter she could love several Marcuses or she could lo lo love one Marcus you could you could write three papers as a singular person or you could write one paper as a singular person so accusative doesn't accusative number doesn't matter so when we translate we're going to translate when we translate we're going to translate in this order into English remember the English word order subject verb accusative actually I'm going to change that even though we say subject I'm going to accuse that to nominative that'll help you nominative verb accusative that's the order we want to put it in so the nominative is first the nominative is Julia what does she do she loves Marcus we will never wonder in Latin if Marcus loves Julia or Julia loves Marcus well we may wonder because we don't know we don't have context but we know for sure Julia loves Marcus it might be unrequited love I'm not sure but we know that she loves Marcus for sure all right let's take a look at the second one here we have our verb spectabant we see the ending is bont the bont tells us that it's imperfect plural third we have a third and you can ask yourself is it third then you can have a nominative it is third so we can have a separate nominative so now we're going to look for something that has a separate nominative ending and sure enough you should begin to recognize that as plural nominative so we have nominative plural does it match the verb in number it sure does so we are good there so we've done number two now we need to look for an accusative is there an accusative ending yes the last word is accusative and it's actually accusative plural you'll know that as you learn now we're going to translate next nominative verb nominative verb accusative so nominative is puella and that means the girls so let me put it over here the girls and then we're going to do the verb what do the girls do they were looking at you could also say they were watching that's either one is fine what were they watching the stars because that's our accusative and stellas means stars okay let's do another one here all right Regina rose on port a bit first thing we're going to look for is the verb here it is we see by the ending bit that it's future 
singular and it's third person again. Now there doesn't always have to be that's third person, which means we can we can look for a separate nominative. Is there a separate nominative? Here it is. Here's the ending. You should know this one. It's first declension. It's Regina and it's nominative singular. Ah, do we need to check? Singular, singular. So we are good there. Let's find the third one. Um, if you know your chart, you'll know that that is actually an accusative singular ending. Remember, singular doesn't matter. Can match or not match. Now let's translate. We're going to go nominative, verb, accusative. Nominative is Regina, which means the queen. What does she do? She will, it's future, will carry. And you can either say a or the, it doesn't matter. Latin doesn't have article adjective. But what will she carry? The rose or a rose. Nominative, nominative first, verb, and then accusative. That's how you translate it into make English sense. Here's the last one. All right. Here that is the last one. I differ kabunt ne kulinam. Ah. Here we have, let's identify bunt. Now bunt, but don't forget the ne. The ne just makes it a question, so we don't use it as a verb ending. Bunt. So here we have, we know that bunt is third person and it is plural and it is also future tense. Now we have a verb, a verb's in third person. Can we have a separate nominative? Absolutely. Is there a separate nominative? This is not a nominative ending. So therefore we need to use the pronoun for our subject that's already in the verb. So, and, and that's the same way if you have a first or second person noun, you just use the pronoun instead of, a, there can't be a separate nominative, so use the pronoun which would be I, we, you, you all. You only use a pronoun in third person if there's not a separate nominative, which there is not. So, kulinam, if you know your chart again, which you're going to memorize because there's a test on this in, uh, on the midterm, all your charts, you know that that's accusative singular. Okay, so when we do a question in English, we do a verb first. So we we'll always start with the helping verb. When you have a question, a helping verb, okay? So the helping verb is will because that's our future tense verb. Will, and then we're gonna do the we're gonna do the nominative or the pronoun, right? Will, and then we're gonna do the accusative. So it switches light less, it switches a little bit when we've got a question. Will, and we use our pronoun, which is they. What will they do? They, they, will they build? What will they build? What's the victim of being built? Accusative singular. Will they build a kitchen? So here's a trick. If you don't know how to turn something into a question, make it a statement first. So the statement, if this wasn't a question, the statement be, they will build a kitchen. So start with a statement and then you can just take the helping verb and move it to the front of the sentence and that will turn it into a question. Will they build a kitchen? <music>